for today's class, I kind of just plan like a review and like some extra questions. Uh, so it's kind of like, you know, like a break, you could say. So you could just like go over everything you learned. So I'm not going to review everything that we've learned so far, but in the questions, that I give you. Um, if you have any doubts, anything you want to like, you want me to redo, anything you like not 100% sure of, we can always go back to my previous slides and all, okay? So one quick um, statement I wanted to show you was, you know how we're using sum is equal to sum plus i? That will actually increment sum or it'll add to the value of sum. You can actually use sum plus equals to i. And this will actually increment. It's the same line. It's just uh, it's just a little shorter, but I've never taught you guys this. Okay, you, and you'll need to use it in the questions that I'm following, right? And this is just a quick reminder because this will also be used pretty often. Okay, so if you guys want, you can um, start the questions, and you can come to me one by one if you have any doubts, and once you're done with each question. Okay, sound good? Can everyone see my screen? Oh, you guys can't see my screen, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, so like I was saying, um, sum is equal to sum plus i, that's what we've been using. Now, if we use sum plus equals to i, it's shorter, but it means the same thing. It's just more like for coders, you know, you always wanna try like shortening the amount of code you put. So I've never taught you guys this, but from now on use this instead. Cool. Um, okay, you guys can start the questions then. So just start with question one. Um, take two numbers from the user and print out the product. So multiply them. Should we do that right now? Yeah, do it right now. I'll wait. Yeah, we can just go through the questions one by one. So like it's more of like a review. So the questions do get harder, but you know. Okay, I'm just gonna keep this open and then question by question I'll go through the answers. Okay, so this is the answer for the next question. Um, we can run this, we can test it out. Okay, this is hopefully, right? <laughs> I guess we'll never know. Um, yeah, so that's three multiplied by 67 multiplied by two, seven, four, seven, five. Right, everyone understand? Oh, can we do the next one? Yep, sure. Okay, here is the next question. This one shouldn't be too difficult. Um, in this question, assume that you do not know how many numbers will be in the list. I'll give you the list at the end and you'll have to use whatever code you have. Okay? Okay, I'm going to go over question three now. Now, uh, the question for question three is, given a list of numbers, Return true if the first and last number of the list are the same. Okay, so this is assuming we do not know the length of the list. Okay, so say we have a list uh, called numbers. Okay, um, I'm not gonna put in the values in number yet, numbers yet. Okay, so this will take a few simple if statements. So if numbers at now the index position of the first number will be zero, right? And the index position of the last number will be, does anyone, anyone wanna guess what the index position of the last number will be? If you guys remember, when we index list, the position of the last number will actually be negative one. So we don't have to know how many numbers are in the list. We can just use negative one and get the last number. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. So now if numbers at zero is equal to the last number, which is numbers at negative one, then we want it to print here. Okay, and then if numbers are actually we can just use an else statement now else print false okay this makes sense so if the first number is equal to the last number it'll print true if 
this statement is not true, then it'll just print false. Okay, now we can test it out. Uh, let's see. Okay, now we'll put that. So in this case, the first number is equal to the last number. Now let's run this. True. Okay, and now we can do the same, but change this last number to something else. Okay, false. Cool, makes sense to everybody? Yep. Cool. Okay, next question. Um, write a function that returns the maximum of two numbers, right? So this one shouldn't be too difficult either. Um, Basically, like, um, do you have to take like two numbers from the user and then tell which one is greater? I mean, okay, if you want to do that, sure, then you can input two numbers. Um, or else you can just make two variables, that's fine too. Okay, actually, um, instead of inputting numbers, what you can do is just pass them in as arguments in the, pass them in as arguments in the, in the um, function. Okay, do that instead. Okay, so I'm gonna get started on the fourth question. Okay, so for question four, they're asking us to create a function that returns a maximum of two numbers. Okay, so these two numbers, I want passed in to the argument, as arguments into this function. Okay, so if I make a function maximum finder, right? I want it to, um, I want it to take in two numbers. What two are we gonna use? We can use number one, number two. Okay, this is what I mean by passing them in as arguments into the, into the function. Right. So now we can just use some simple if statements. If number one is greater than number two, then print number one. one is the maximum. Now if number two is uh, two is greater than number one print number two and finally, the reason I didn't use an else statement there because there can be another scenario where else they can be equal. So then we can say print the numbers are equal. Okay. So when one of the none of these cases are satisfied, that means the two numbers are equal. My question: Can we use an if, an else, and an elif statement? If and else and else, yeah, of course. Um, we can put the else statement here. That's actually better. Cool. In this case, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but we can. In the next question, it'll actually make a big difference. You'll see. Okay, now we can just call this function with the two numbers, maximum finder. Okay. Um, number one is the maximum. Now, if we make this like 24, then number two is the maximum. And if we make this 24, then numbers are equal. Cool. Okay. Um, you can ask me if you have, if you have any questions. Uh, let's move on to the next question. So this one's a little longer. I'm guessing this will be the last question of the day. So you guys can work on that. And then after that, we can take this as homework, write a function to average numbers into this. Shouldn't be too difficult, but yeah, take your time. Okay, so Arush asked a question, what if we wanna let the user input the two numbers? Okay, we can work on that. Um, everyone else can work on the other question if you would like. I can show Arush how to do this. 
So instead of passing them in as arguments into the list as number one and number two, um, what's up? And yeah, okay. So instead of passing them in as number one and number two, you can call the function, but first you can just say number one is equal to and input enter number one and same thing number two is equal to end and put enter number two. good question because yeah it makes sense um yeah so over here we're still calling the function but we're not passing in any parameters right so we're calling it with nothing inside but this function will still run everything inside over here okay so we can we can make this a little nicer. Huh? There you go. And then run this. Okay. 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 Um, an extra question would be to get the maximum of as many numbers inside a list. Right, so I can put in 30 numbers and the function should get the maximum. You can get you guys can try that out after you finish this question right here. Okay, question five. So does anyone have any idea how to do question five? That's a little bit more challenging. It uses a concept we used once before in this class. Anyone have any idea? Is it a loop? Um, for question five, no, we will not use a loop. Because we're just taking in one number, so there's nothing to loop through. Um, good try. Um, anyone else? There's one key concept we're using here. I'll show you. If you guys know how to get it in the next two minutes, I'll show you guys. Like I know. Uh, yeah. Our, huh? Sorry. I would like to find the remainders we meant to do equal equal zero. Okay. Do you know how? Do you know how you would get the remainder? Um, I'm not sure about that. Like. Okay. Yeah. Arya answered it. So you would actually good job. You'd actually use a modulus. A modulus is a percentage sign. So if you were to do five modulus three, it would give you the remainder as two. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Um, try it out. I'll give you two minutes. Try using that concept. If you can't get it, then I will solve it. Let me actually add the next question. Isn't this like the like the first, the one that you just showed before this? Um, this question, question five or seven? Um, five. Five. Um, uh, yeah, it's a little similar actually, but it just uses modulus. Yeah, you're right. The question three you were saying. It's a little similar. Question five. Okay, so I'm going to do it since we're running out of time. I'm going to solve the next question. Okay. <clears throat> so what's the first task we're going to have here? We want to create a function called fizzbuzz. Okay, and we want it to take in a number. Okay, so that means you have to create a function called fizzbuzz and we wanted to take in one number. And this number, that means I'm gonna have to pass it in as a parameter, right? As an argument to this list. So I'm gonna pass in number one because it's gonna be using this. Okay. Um, yeah, so when we're running it, we can pass in whatever argument you like. Okay, next. If the number is divisible by three, it should return fit. Okay. <clears throat> if the number, if the number one, or actually I'll just put number, is divisible by three. So anyone have, anyone have any idea on how the exact statement we can put for how to see if it's divisible by three? Zero. Do you put the, div the division thing? Um, so yeah, actually we'd use a percentage sign, the modulus. Um, someone said something earlier? I can modulus hear Modulus three equal equal zero. Modulus three equals equal zero, perfect. Okay, so modulus three equals equals zero. 
Okay, Sasha, do you understand this? So, yeah, okay. like I meant the percentage. Oh, you meant the percentage. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Okay, so then we wanted to print, but like it said, fizz for some reason. Don't ask me why. Okay, next we're gonna have um, if it is divisible by five, it should return buzz. If number, same concept, five equals equals to zero, print buzz. Now, if, um, what's the last one? If it is divisible by both three and five, it should return fizz buzz. Okay, let's do this. If it number is now what we do here is we use an and statement, right? Um, yep, perfect. And operation, good job, Arsh. Number five. Oh, sorry, is equal to equal to zero. And modulus five is equal to equal to zero. Then we wanted to print. Is buzz. So when you run the code, you'll actually see a small problem. Okay, let's actually use this else. Um, sorry. Else we want it to return the same number, which means print. Print number. Number. Perfect. I did the exactly same thing as that, but like when I run the code, it just it just returns the same number, even if even oh, if really? it's three or five. Okay, interesting. Um, I'll see what that wasn't the problem. It's fine if it would be the same thing, but except for if I did Ellis. Okay, yes, that's actually the key to solving this. What's gonna happen over here is if the number, say we pass in the number 15. Sorry, why did I put number there? Okay, say we pass in the number 15. That would mean it would print fizz, it would print buzz, and it would print fizz buzz. But actually, if it's divisible by both of them, we only want it to print this. So how can we avoid that? We can use the ls. Okay, so this is gonna be the first command we check for, right? L if and else if here. So if it's divisible by both, it'll print fizzbuzz. If it's only divisible by three, it'll print fizz, and then it'll end the if and else statement right there, and it'll move on to the next line. If it's number is divisible by five, then it'll print buzz, and then it's finished. And then finally, you have the else statement, if it's none, right? But if you use the if, it'll check no matter what the previous case scenario gets. So that's why we'd have to use if and else. Okay, so we can test this out. It should be running well. Okay, you see that? So it printed. Um, fizzbuzz because it was divisible by both. Now we can do nine. We can do fizz and again ten divisible by five. It'll give us buzz. Okay, and if we do none, say like seventeen. Perfect. You see? When I gave an up. Oh. When I gave in the input as fifteen, it just it just did it just wrote fizz, not fizz buzz. Okay, can I see your code? Um, can you share your screen? Okay, yeah. So I see a problem here. What's gonna happen is it'll do if number is equal to zero, print or if number is divisible by three, it'll print fizz. Okay, then it'll check if number is divisible by five, it'll print buzz. But since you use an elif, it'll end right there. If you remove the elif, it'll print fizz, buzz, and fizz buzz. But that's also not what we want. What we want is for it to print fizz buzz first. So that has to be your number one testing condition. So if you can move the elif number is equal to number modulus three is equal to zero and number modulus five is equal to zero, move it to your first command and make an if statement. Okay. So put it um, as your first if, if statement. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not test up. Do you see why that works, or you have any questions? Yeah, I understand. You understand. Okay. Great. Okay. So for these last two questions, you guys can take a note of it and um, do it as homework. 
Cool. Um, does that sound good? And we can discuss it in the next class. All right. So if you all can take a note of this, then um, you can do it by next class and you can show me. Or you can always email me. Up to you. Okay. you Am I sharing it? my screen? Oh, sorry, sorry. All right. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. Great. So can you guys take a note of this? And also put your name in the chat box so I can take attendance. OK, great. So you all can leave now. Thanks for joining. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for joining, everybody. I'll see you guys next week.